in three, two, one. What is going on, everybody? It's your boy, the Lo-Fi Horror Guy. Welcome to another episode of the Lo-Fi Horror Guys, growing on you live. Today, I'm going to have on uh, such an awesome guest. I am so stoked for this. Cannot wait. Uh, my man, Hank Von Hell, uh, ex-member and leading vocalist of the one and only... Turbo Negro, and now a solo project. He has uh, Dead, which just came out this year, Egomania, which came out a couple of years ago, 2018, Hank Van Hell. Uh, my dude, this is going to be so, so cool. I've got lots of questions for him, digging into past, present, uh, different projects outside of music that he has going on. Uh, lots of really, really cool stuff. So, ha ha ha! Hank! Help! How are you doing, sir? Fuck, hell, shit. <laughs> man, thank you so much for, for, for tuning in, man. I, I'm sorry that I, I, I had a mix-up on the times for you this morning. You, you messaged me. It was like 6 a.m. Well, yeah, uh, no, it's not your fault. It's, <laughs> it's actually me because I always cho uh, chose workshop, you know, shop, wood shop, uh, when you had, like, when you can choose subjects uh, in the 80s. And all yeah. the others did like computer shit, you know. And <laughs> I was like, I just want to bang my head against a piece of wood and see what happens, you know. So whenever people ask me to like uh, uh, go online and it's about an app and shit like that, I, I kind of, I kind of become frustrated and uh, start talking. English with a German <laughs> accent and fuck this, I'm gonna kill the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're doing great, man. Thank you Thanks, so so bro. much for uh, for for being on today. I appreciate your time. So look, we're gonna have a couple of icebreaker fun questions first. The remainder of the interview digs into you and your craft, and I have one finale that is written just for you, Hank. So if you're ready, man, we're gonna dig right in. I'm good. I'm good. All right, first of all, my wife and I do some traveling. If we were coming through the notorious Oslo, what would be a local restaurant or food staple that we would have to try while there, according to Hank Von Hell? Fuck. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> uh, damn. Uh, well, uh, yeah, there, there, there is one really good, good uh, restaurant um and and it's a little bit off like the main street there but it's called restaurant eight at the savoy hotel okay and uh, and uh they always serve like a set uh five course meal and you buy it with with the package with with drinks or not you you choose and the owner of the restaurant a master chef he's a brilliant guy you know he also owns like the uh, some of the elite restaurants, more like center by the more uh, more expensive places. But that's his kind of. Uh, it was his first kitchen. It was his first restaurant, and everybody who's been like a, a, a good uh, foodie uh, have have been there first, and and that's oh. where he does his most innovative. Uh, a innovative cuisine shit, but uh, also that was um, the restaurant where I personally catered and ho and hosted uh, uh, Johnny Knoxville and Steve O uh, oh, when shit. they came uh, when they came to Oslo uh, promoting uh, the Jackass uh, movie number two where. Where Turbo Negro actually had like the uh, the opening uh, score right. song, you know? <laughs> oh yeah, awesome! Yeah. Wow. And we had like a separate chamber there, and well, and uh, the chef there, he's also a friend of mine. Um, we decided to to do like a jackass gourmet meal, uh, where <laughs> I did, where I was standing as the main chef, you know. And I cooked like old Viking food, uh, and that was like sheep oh. balls, uh, <laughs> uh, and, Damn. and pickled uh, pickled goat eyes and bullshit like that. And um, yeah, it was good. We was in a separate chamber because it smelled like somebody uh, had 
died in the Viking Age and <laughs> they're lying there, you know. <laughs> but oh uh, if you go to that restaurant, it has a lot of, of epic history in it and the food is awesome. And if you call them in advance, you can get me to come there in my chef's attire and serve sheep balls, you know. <laughs> is your chef's attire like completely nude just with like a jean jacket? No, it's more like really old and and fucked up and the uh, <laughs> health government would never uh, uh, agree Allow it. Yeah. anything to do in a kitchen. <laughs> And I have like a homemade knife, um, and oh, it's, but it's very sharp uh, and, yeah. and and very like it's very well uh, folded and, and and forged by by a very good Canadian smith called uh, Wally Hayes. He's like okay. really good, but I use that between courses. I stand picking my teeth with it. <laughs> <laughs> And sometimes nice. it starts bleeding, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Just to ensure that it's sharp enough, huh? <laughs> yeah. And then I ask, are, are you sure you want to eat this? Maybe I have eight, you know. <laughs> no, I don't have eight. Or maybe I do. No. Uh, but oh, I don't God. have COVID-19, so. Yeah, uh, that's, I mean, you, that's you a want, start. You want corona? <laughs> <laughs> right. Dear Lord. All right, let me, let me ask you as far as, you know, with your, your solo albums, you've had just an amazing, you know, mix of different musicians on, on both projects. Uh, you know, but if you could uh, assemble a dream band for your next project, for your next album that included four members of your choosing, you know, even dead or alive, who would be the other four members on this next album? Oh yeah, it will. Only, it would only be dead musicians, you know. So okay, let them rest in peace. You know, it would be. Right. Yeah, it, it would be. Um, it would be uh, Michael Jackson on drums. Uh, sure. I would have uh, Amy Winehouse on guitar. Uh, yeah. Very high standards, you know. She would have to perform like oh, yeah. Jimi Hendrix. And then I would have <laughs> uh, Jim Morrison on poetry. And oh, we wow. would do like a free jazz, uh, a free jazz acid uh, ska thing, I think. Yeah. Uh, who would be on horns? On horns? Yeah. Uh, if, it was the, a, if it was a ska I'm, project, I'm would, you, would you bring some horns the, in? record would be oh. called blow my horn you know it's like <laughs> god damn all right i might have to edit that part out so you can actually make that happen i don't want to i don't want to release any new uh, any new material <laughs> oh no th this will be this will be out on 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 um, the greatest record label in the world uh called nameless Lay records love it love it Eagle all Musk. right it's Elon Musk. It's always him. He's behind it. <laughs> him and SpaceX. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Let me, he takes time from that. Yeah, all right, let, let me ask you. So you've mentioned, you know, your first rock and roll record being Shout at the Devil. You know, in, in your youth, I just wanted to ask about different musical interests from your youth. And, you know, what was playing in the household? Uh, you know, I grew up in northern Norway. It was kind of uh, like a folk song thing in the 70s you know where where it it was kind of like uh, you know the the very famous scandinavian social democracy thing where you kind mm -hmm. of it was not like like a pure communist thing but it was like everybody's included you do you and you're allowed to be part of it and it's it's actually very fucked up because i was brought up with 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 uh values that girls can do stuff you know and that that you don't have to be a macho man to be a man and you know and, and you know i grew up with that shit that was normal for me and and now suddenly uh people are actually trying, uh, having to fight for for uh things that i took for granted you know uh but my parents were singing like like country folk music pointing at the government and saying like like and and also like the the square culture you know that, that this is suppressing people you know this is fuck, fucked up you know that people are, are working their asses off uh, they're fishing they're drowning they're 
they're dying at 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 the construction sites and uh and 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 you don't give a shit you know all the songs were about that it was like a woody guthrie uh oh okay hello yeah you know like and dylan-esque thing you know and mm -hmm. and that was what i grew up with so uh when i started you know uh yeah my my mom died in 1978 and and that created some sort of darkness in me and 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 it was just in the wake of, of uh, Vietnam War, and we was very aware of that, you know. Right. Uh, and and then you know some sort of aggression, because I I thought life was fucked up and unfair, you know. Uh, then I took that that um, you can say that that spirit of that folk music. We also had you know that like the Sami people is kind of like they they uh, they were nations like in America, you know. Right. Uh, yeah, tribal nations and 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 in my class there were like uh, fifty fifty, you know, and and we were brothers and sisters and we grew up together, and and that aggression was just waiting for punk to happen. Oh right, okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, when the first song, you know, that, that really struck me was that was not like folk music, was like uh, was like. Um, a northern Norwegian punk song called Hang All the Priests just to fuck them up. <laughs> Damn, okay. Or all the churches just to fuck them up. And that was actually, that was not like black metal uh, uh, hatred to God because uh, uh, people are very spiritual up there, you know. That was right. actually like a revenge song for all the Sami people who were burned alive, beheaded, and and stuff by suppressive priests coming from uh, southern uh, Norway or Denmark and Sweden and, and just fucked up people, you know. So the aggression uh, was just waiting for punk to happen. And since I was seven years old, you know, I was part of that feeling, you know, that, that wrath, you know, that we are out here up north uh, uh, and we're, we're struggling and we're working our asses off. And people are dying uh, in our in our arms, you know, our loved ones, our mothers, our brothers, our sisters, you know, and all the government does is like fuck us in the ass, you know, and, right. and taking all all the values that we have created. So when punk rock came, that was the first Norwegian that the, my first Norwegian punk rock song I heard was was this hang all the priests just to fuck him up, you know, Damn. and it was. Okay. And it was heartfelt. It was not like just to provoke. It was right. a provoked answer to fucking suppression, you know. And and that stuck with me. Uh, so I became maybe more or less like an anti-person uh, instead of being like a model citizen. And, <laughs> and that kind of stuck with me throughout my life. So I can say as a conclusion that I still don't do person very well. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, how how did it go from you know from from that individual song to more of like a more a mainstream you know rock and roll you know or you know to the day that you had shout at the devil in your hands because I love colors I love flashing you know I love you know I, yeah it's it's fucking like 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 the native thing you know you're they taught mm -hmm. me that also you know uh, it's life. It's fucking dark what you do. Well, you dress up in feathers, colors, and not <laughs> give a shit and shake your ass and and cry your tears out when you're sad and mm. shout out your anger to the devil, whatever. <laughs> and yeah, boys can have makeup. You wanna you wanna fight about it? Yeah. You know. <laughs> so okay. you know, so it, that that aggression was was also, that was a result of like hundreds of years of sorrow and and and, and you know it and and I very soon realized that being an individual, taking a stand for who you are, you do you, and just be careful that what you choose is what is what's going to happen, and make sure that you can look people in the eye after having made your choice and acted mm -hmm. out of it. 
and and that has reflected uh, in in throughout my whole career as as an artist and a musician, all right. and sometimes uh, costing me a lot. You know, like bad for business, bad for career. I've, I've had like really big company people saying you shouldn't say like this, you shouldn't do like that, uh, and then they shun me for years, and I've been like. Uh, yeah, yeah. We don't want to touch that guy. He says too many crazy things and stuff like that. But right. here I am. <laughs> I mean, you know, and that that hits on something as far as you know, especially with nowadays. You know, I guess saying that the cancel culture or whatever. You know, that's a topic, but it's something you know where people that keep true and true to their their character and their 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 figure of what they portray. Uh, you know uh, that lends the following that you know somebody like yourself has uh you know ha ha there's been a lot of opportunities that have come up and you're like you know fuck it i'm not gonna do that because i'm not gonna change uh yeah well, well yeah because i i i don't know how to 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 act differently because as i said i don't do person very well <laughs> right. uh, like but i do like uh multi-dimensional uh time traveling uh, <laughs> uh nature <laughs> guy with 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 urban uh bad habits and to support <laughs> and perfectly yeah. sir and perfectly <laughs> all right let me ask you in the in the earlier days of playing shows and you know just starting a band what were some lessons learned in those days that you carry with you still today uh that uh you always need to kind of uh, monitor uh the lead guitar player so that he doesn't dominate the monitors. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah, absolutely. I, I actually went to Jerusalem two years ago okay. uh, to the Wailing Wall, you know, where you, where you ask God to help him out, you know, and, and I put my forehead to the wall and said, dear God, please turn down the lead guitarist. <laughs> 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 oh, man. <laughs> has, he, has he responded at all? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like... <laughs> but uh, but then again, I had fired my two of them. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I have a new one oh, now. Oh my god! Yeah. All right. I have All right. A new one. You want to say hi to him? Uh, sure, sure. It's Billy. It's my new guitar uh, boy. And... <laughs> hey man, <laughs> what is going on, man? How's it going? Good. How are you? Oh, uh, great. Yeah, you, you guys doing a little practicing or what's going on? You know, no, we haven't done it because of, of Corona. Because uh, oh. we, we're so uh, we're so depressed. No, we're not. <laughs> but we don't give a shit in sort of way. But um, uh, this is Philly the kid. He he uh, he's uh, yeah. He, I think he's like two and a half years old. <laughs> no, no, twenty twenty four. Yeah. Oh, okay. 27. Right. He's actually 27, so I'm going to have to fire him in two years. <laughs> uh, you can't have lead guitar player. Uh, <laughs> uh, too loud or too long? Yeah. Over 30. Yeah, yeah over 30. No, nah, right. but... Uh, yeah, but uh, uh, what's, uh, what's new on this is that uh, Philly, Philly uh, uh, I've been... I was spying on for two years because I yeah. knew that some of my lead first lead guitar players were kind of helping me out like establishing the comeback mm -hmm. but uh but consolidating and continuing this i would i would have to have like uh uh some sort of uh of uh, uh, a guy that that speaks in a very very loyal dark voice uh okay. he's, former, right. he's former yugoslavian and Yes, I will kill people with my guitar. <laughs> I will break uh, people's minds if they fuck up with uh, <laughs> hell. with my uh, former Yugoslavian breath. I I can kill with an eye, but I prefer to do it with guitar solo. <laughs> Oh my God, boy! Well, these these next projects coming up, I can't wait to hear. I'm, uh, yeah, it's really building me up. You know, it's a, it's it's building up the anticipation. <laughs> uh, let let me ask you, you know, before the pandemic and all this bullshit hit, uh, tell me about your pre show ritual. You know, and 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 how how you get ready. You know, what do you do? You, do you do some stretching? You know, do you have some sort of prep? 
No, no, I don't. You just fucking come right out and do it. Well, yeah, I, 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 uh, earlier I used to have like this party hardcore backstage, you know, like you know, liquor all over and, and cigarettes and, mm -hmm. and shit like that. Uh, and, uh, uh, that doesn't work very well. Uh, obviously we have proof that that was kind of not helping me out, but I actually sit like an old fuck drinking coffee. <laughs> uh, okay. And uh, the musicians have their own. After I have like my own chambre, you know, like, and I have like a pot of coffee, uh, some, uh, some, you know, you know, those ranch dip celery <laughs> thing. And, okay. uh, I sit there and I send out some dick pics. <laughs> people i don't know uh and i i do it very aggressively uh, so it's not to make people horny it's just to offend uh and uh and then uh, the manager says it's showtime and i say no i have at least 10 more dishes then and then i have to walk like very slowly like an old you know like like uh, Walt and Breaking Bad, you know, before he starts cooking meth, you know. Oh. Like, and with my coffee cup, then I get my mic uh, in my hand and I say, uh, I, I, I uh, give my coffee mug, you know, to, to, to the manager and say, can you please hold my cup of coffee for me? And I just have to do this. It'll just take an hour and a half, maybe two hours. <laughs> And make sure that the coffee's hot when I come back, you know. <laughs> and then I do my God. show. And then, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, then I go back and then uh, to, the, to, to, the, um, to my own uh, uh, dressing room, locker room. And then I have a cup of coffee. And then I <laughs> go to the bus and put on some Americana Glenn Campbell oh thing, you know. And I sit then with my ultra conservative uh bus driver from alabama uh and and we say things that are not very polite to say to <laughs> other people uh while we're laughing uh, <laughs> and feel like we're the worst persons alive and then we stop and buy a burger and uh, then everybody's asleep and then and and then uh, we start shedding uh, truth, you know, and and with tears in our eyes, you know, and you know, you, you do you remember the war, you know, the landing in Congo, you know, in <laughs> 1962, you know, uh, you know, Tio died in my arms, oh you know, my like, God. and last thing he said was like, where, why didn't they put my fucking parachute in my backpack? You know, and, you know, and I said, "Well, I'm 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 gonna make it right for you, T-Bone. I'm gonna make it right for you. Time for fiber. You know, oh and, my God! Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's like you know, oh. Baby, I'm sure. <laughs> oh my God! All right, I I dear Lord, I gotta I gotta stop. I'm trying my hardest to hold back uh, from interrupting you with my loud and obnoxious laugh. But Jesus Christ, these are great <laughs> answers." <laughs> uh, and I'm ready for this next one here. So let me ask you, you know, in one of your recent Instagram posts, you asked a pack of seagulls whether they preferred Slayer or Anthrax. And it hit right home for me. And I wanted to ask you if you were writing a set list for tonight and you got to include any one song from both bands, any one song from Slayer and Anthrax, what would make the set list? Oh, yeah. It's not seagulls. Those are actually Norwegian banana eagles. <laughs> Okay. That look like seagulls. No, I would like. Uh, I w I would like. You know. Uh, um, I would like to have. You know, like Anthrax with uh, with uh, the song uh, uh, "Horny Women on Fire." I love that song. Uh, Instant and, classic. Yeah, and uh, and uh, uh, the Slayer. You know, with 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 like um, uh, a fist fuck the tailpipe of my Mustang. Oof. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, uh, those are both classics. I can see yeah, why you choose I, them. And I would probably kind of play them simultaneously uh, and like, see what 
song ends first and that's the winner. <laughs> okay. okay. Kind of like a medley, you know, so it doesn't take yeah, up too much time, just, but oh, you well. can get in the classics. Yeah. And then that's also where I confuse my musicians. So they really fuck it up and then I can fire them. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. Beautiful. I, I love it. Now, along with those two tracks, you know, if you could choose a set list, you know, not involving crowd pleasers or singles or anything, you know, from Turbo Negro and, and Hank Von Hell, what five yeah. songs would you have in, set, in this set well, list? Well, I would have like, uh, uh, you know, that Fuck the Crowd. Mm -hmm. That song, I would play that. Okay. Yeah. And my roadies are fired. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, and, uh, oh yeah, that one from Beverly Hills, uh, shop, you know, okay. uh, called Banana in the Tailpipe. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, and a... of course I would have, uh, Wasp Fuck Like a Beast. Ooh, yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. And the okay. ballad, the ballad from a band called, uh, uh, the Bears called, uh, I'm the Beast. Oh, okay. Well, I, I think, you know, and I didn't want this. <laughs> it sounds like a crowd full of very horny people is what that set list sounds like. Yeah, but because all, all my all my crowd, you know, I stopped, you know, selling tickets, you know, because ticket sales are down, you know, so what you do mm -hmm. to gain a crowd now you, you open up Geyser and Tinder, and just all your matches you you invite to a date and that's a show. <laughs> That's why I'm selling out all the time. <laughs> oh, man. oh man, are you letting people know in advance so you know there can be a group of ten or you know? No, I just many... walk on stage and say, "Thank you, here I am. Let's fuck." Ooh, yeah, yeah. There's no, I, I mean, nothing more needed. Yeah, oh, there you go. Okay, uh, tell us about your latest album, Dead. You know, in the process of making that, compared to Egomania, you know, what was what was different? What did you like better? Well, yeah, well, uh, Egomania was actually more, more or less like uh, uh, taking a stand, you know, and it was also like, it was released on uh, Dia de la Muerta, you know, that, that Mexican yeah. thing coming back to life. Mm -hmm. I, I did the white thing on purpose, you know, because that was what, what uh, you know, that hobbit called Voldemort, you know, they, <laughs> they were tr trying to rape this balrog demon guy for a thousand years <laughs> and he came back you know and 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 we did it like really as a surprise nobody knew about bum to bum when it came out you know and mm -hmm. with the video with steve-o in it the whole world was shocked you know like nobody knew that i was doing a comeback and egomania was actually actually a very I would say a narcissistic statement that, yeah, I'm Hank on Hell. You guys, the rest of the world, you are very good, but I'm Hank on Hell. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. Okay. What, uh, were some, what were some of the first tracks, you know, to get, uh, to get dead, you know, kind of on the road to, to, to you know, uh, starting the project? Well, it was Bum to Bum, actually. That was, that was the first song. Me and AB9, you know, my co-writer and mm -hmm. producer. Uh, and, uh, yeah, my, my like, uh, we were kind of doing this, like, uh, uh, a dynamic uh, uh, terror twin thing, you know. Uh, but uh, uh, that was when, uh, when uh, he also discovered that, that I actually can make, I can actually make songs, you know, uh, alone also. And, mm. and it became a manifesto where I could make the death punk album that I always wanted to make, you know. Right. Like, this is my version of death punk. And all the songs were very, very, uh, ta uh, uh, yeah, like, uh, painted out. Like, this is Hank from Hell's music that's the album he wanted to make all the time mm -hmm. now he gets to do it and that coming back to life thing was was also yeah it was it was a, a, a statement like trying to be take 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 the power you know take take uh take what's mine you know and i did it 
Uh, but then all these questions came up very fast. Where have you been all these years? You know, uh, right. and where has Hank been all these years? And 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 why have why have you acted so weird and 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 <laughs> crazy and and make, creating and never answering any questions about anything and just let rumors and everything just let it flow. Let it you do you. Let it all unfold. You know. Uh, uh -huh. But then the question was like, why, where, how, you know, what, where you been, you know? Right. And then that came where I actually made maybe the most like personal and, and actually a very, very dark and strenuous album. It was very hard for me emotionally because uh, that actually, that is actually uh, an explanation to, to why Hank actually exists, you know, where uh, these, all, all the songs there are related to uh, the darkest hours and the darkest places I've been in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, I've of course told the story in a way, in a fashion that makes, that makes it open uh, for interpretation uh, because it's not, it's not me trying to make people agree with, with something that's been hard for me. Like you have to agree that and feel sorry for me. And this is my pain. You know, <laughs> it's, uh, right. it's not, it's not that it's, it's just totally relatable stories. And the point is that I use my own story, uh, to tell a story that the listener, uh, my audience actually can relate to. So, uh, right. I, so I'm not singing my own story. I'm singing. I'm I'm telling individual. Uh, the story I tell is valid in, uh, individually for every single listener, and he will have his own total or her total subjective re relation to the song. So I mm -hmm. give I give the song. It's not about me. It's about it's about you. That's what I'm basically saying you know oh, okay all yeah. right yeah i was gonna so, say you know i i noticed a little bit of a different you know approach just as far as you mentioned you know it being a mo more emotional just as far as with uh you know with with crown and then you had uh disco you know there was a couple of different you know tracks that were on there were, that were a little bit of a different approach but still very much the same spirit and same energy of uh at what you would expect out of hank von hell yeah yeah and 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 and, and it was also like you know the white egomania was like more like oh I'm back victory yeah like uh, messiah thing you know uh, <laughs> but but uh the dead is more like uh, well but this is what you've been this is what you've been missing this yeah is okay gonna, this is this I'm the emperor of the underworld you know and I've been in hell a lot of times I know the way out and I know the way back down you know yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, so uh, uh, that was actually like a manifest of, of, of Hank von Hell and why and why uh, why I actually tell these stories and and, and how I tell them so mm. yeah so it was more like okay I'm back and then people ask who are you and I said <laughs> well hold, hold my heroin needle you know <laughs> 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 I'll take out a ride. <laughs> nice. And, and now Dead was released on June 15th, also being your birthday, correct? Yeah. That's that's not folklore, okay? Was there, you know, was there a plan behind that? Did you yeah. did you want to do, you know, yeah. hey, happy birthday to me. Here's here's some more. Uh, the thing is that when I turned 6 years old on the 15th of June, uh my mother died. So she died oh. on my birthday. So wow. When my uh, sick, my my life was to be celebrated, you know, that very day my mother passed away. So uh, uh, that was my 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 celebration was holding my uh, ice cold mother's dead hand, you know, like, and and that kind of uh, did something to me uh, that I realized that uh, uh, that uh, I should not maybe try. To strive for happiness or 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 stuff like that. I just have to. What I'm what I'm what I'm searching for is not to be a happy guy. 
that's out of the contract, you know, that's out of the deal with the universe. But trying to find some meaning in it, trying to not be bored, and trying to uh, to uh, um, be there for all the other kids, you know, all the other girls and boys out there who are are left alone with their sorrows and their catastrophes, you know, that have lost a lot, uh, telling them, and that are, are struggling with depression, with anxieties, with with bad self-esteem and being being different, you know, that that I just want to use my voice and tell them that, well, uh, uh, you're not alone, you know, we're all there. Uh, and many more than you think are struggling with, with, with it. And in these days, you know, I, I think, you know, I'm a father to a girl, she's 11 years old, and, and, and she knows about this, you know, she knows my story. And, and, and uh, uh, in, in her world now, it's, it's you know, it's, it's really hard to find, figure out uh, uh, when, when, when you use the internet as a mirror to yourself and, and you find that, that the, the picture perfect on, on, on your app uh, is so fucking different from who you actually are, you know? Uh, and, and, and just oh. then I realized that, that so many people have now been hypnotized to think that they will never be good enough. They will never, uh, they will never be uh, uh, happy. They will always be addicted to uh, sympathy, heart emojis, and likes. And if they don't get it, they don't exist. You know, and and um, uh, that is actually the whole point of what I'm trying to tell people. And I'm the totally wrong person to tell it even. Who am I, you know, like a Northern Norwegian dude pushing 50 and uh, thinking that I, I know everything. I don't know shit, you know. Uh, but what I re really feel is that people are really too hard on themselves. Uh, uh, and, and that makes them into little demons that are really merciless on others. So I just feel that people don't give each other slack at all while they're still not able to take the fucking joke, you know? <laughs> right, right. And, and, and Hank von Hell has a mission here, and that is to, to, to actually tell people that, yeah, well, sorry, uh, it sucks to live on a planet. It's a hard rock. Try to bang your head against the wall and see who went you or the wall. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. So wow. that's, that's the serious thing about it. I I'm just want people to, to remember that we are all fuck-ups. There is no such thing as normal. Everybody is equal except me. No, no, that goes the other way. Everybody is different. <laughs> Except me, but I'm equal. No, but if you, I'm equal to a different, yeah, it's like, fuck this shit, you know? <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. Wow. So, that... I'm just like, it's a message also for, for you know, and, and we're a generation of punks and metalheads, you know, mm -hmm. suddenly having kids, you know, right. and we hated growing up. And and we are actually the first generation in history that can tell our kids that it's okay to say fuck you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I, that's absolutely an amazing. You know, I I appreciate hearing that story, and uh, you know, uh, very heartfelt and deep. You know, I, I I expected laughing a lot, but that uh that hit pretty close. You know, and I think those things are really important for a lot of young kids, especially nowadays that are battling with you know just different things as far as social media and trying to just keep up on top of being the best yeah. version of some other shit that they think they're supposed to be. Uh, yeah. That's, that's huge. You know, thank you very much. That's oh, amazing. Yeah. Bravo, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that is actually like the serious fundament that lies yeah. behind all my joking and all my shenanigans, you know, uh, mm -hmm. it's like life sucks. You don't, uh, the only way to survive it is not to give a shit, you know, man. 
Well, that, that's that. I, I love it. I love it. Absolutely. I, I don't know how to segue into this next question because that was so good. Uh, but you know, I'm going to hit on you know one of your one of your lines. You know, one of the ones that always stuck with me. That was a very classic line from one of your tracks. Was from the Age of Pamperius, uh, where you state, "So you think you've had a pizza? Well, not like this. But now recently, you've gotten into the barbecue game." And I wanted yeah. to ask, you know, according to Hank Von Hell, what do you consider a decent barbecue? A decent barbecue? Yeah. Oh, uh, that, what is a go-to? I, I, have, I, I always have this one tip, and this is from bitter experience. Uh, make sure that the animal is totally dead before you throw it on there. Sure, sure. Yeah, because that, then you avoid a lot of noise. <laughs> <laughs> no disrupting the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, nice. you know nice. i'm 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 um, I'm, um uh, uh, all all you know I, I wrote barbecue books i've been like kind of of uh, promoting uh the american kitchen cuisine to uh to scandinavians you know and okay. and and just coming home from tours in the 90s with with knowledge about smokers with slow cooking with with uh, we we cut even we even cut meat differently, so we don't have briskets, you know. In uh, when you go to uh, a butcher here, you know, uh, okay. and and that changed a lot, you know. So uh, throughout, yeah, the last ten years, uh, um, the barbecue culture in Norway has adapted a lot of, of good American tradition in barbecuing and. And I, I learned a lot about that, uh, especially when I, I traveled to to uh, Texas. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I'm a really like fan of Texas barbecue because it's it's so redneck, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and that's where and, you learned you have to completely kill the animal before throwing it on. Well, yeah, that's where I learned that. You know? <laughs> and, and, and you know, uh, the reason behind slow cooking is not because the meat becomes so tender and shit. It's that you just can put it on the there uh, on the barbecue you put on the lid and then you go out and shoot shit for a <laughs> couple of hours while being totally drunk you know and uh, yeah so and there are nobody around for miles so you can't hit any people uh, <laughs> because if you do you'll get executed right <laughs> okay. and barbecued you know and barbecued yeah okay yeah. It's just, are, are you, yeah, are, you know this old Sparky is ready for a BBQ, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Are you more of like a, a, a spicier barbecue fella or sweeter? You know, what kind of, what, what side do you fall on? No, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm like, you know, I'm a very seductive guy, you know. I, uh, and I also have, I also have, you know, that European thing. Um, but also the Viking thing. So I can, I can, uh, I can uh, speak with a Latin voice <laughs> and uh, I mix this into the barbecue that I put eroticism. <laughs> and, uh, you think it's too salt? I could make it saltier, <laughs> you know? And then the Viking thing is, and, uh, and if, you think it's, uh, if, if you think it's too dry, I will cut your head off and make you bleed. <laughs> and then, uh, and then um, having, you know, that, that really inner conflict uh, that, a modern, modern, uh, southern uh, redneck always have to have, you know, like, yeah, okay, we have a story to be ashamed of, but some of it was cool, you know, <laughs> the food, <laughs> you know, and, oh, nice. and then nice. you, you get all this, like, uh, it's all evolution, you know, because when, when, uh, when, when generation after generation evolve, uh, that I always, and this is also very like serious and touching. I, I actually see, you know, that that being in Texas, being in Louisiana right now, being uh, being seeing how how the interaction there bet between uh, groups that were very separated earlier and and actually a very shameful and and, and tragic and and provocative story, you know, turns into something that is. That is uh, fucking good food, you know, and <laughs> meals shared by people who would have never been able to talk to each other 100 years ago, but now 
are are uh, are interacting and are, are actually having families together you know so so and and that that is always manifest in the food you know you, you get right. soul food you get cajun food you get like classic beef uh, mm -hmm. cowboy barbecue you get like rattlers and you get uh, a lot of the native uh, thing and 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 i would actually say that a lot of people are talking about you know uh, the japanese and the french kitchens and, and the ooh la la and bullshit you know but the american <laughs> kitchen uh, says more about the modern history of mankind and says everything about rock and roll than anything else in the world okay well all right now, yeah now also hitting on you know you you're doing accents and different things you know in the break between turbo negro and your your solo project you also took up acting you know doing some writing as well uh how, how did you get into how did you get into film how did that come about for you well i i i, I was actually that year 2009 Mm -hmm. uh, uh, where I, I decided that I had to leave Turbo Negro because I felt I became just so one-dimensional that if I don't, like, break the spell here, I will become that fuck-up forever, and it'll take five years, and I'll, I'll die and become one one uh, uh, one of the legendary dead guys, you know? Sure. Uh, yeah, and, and I had s so much that I wanted to figure out, you know, um, uh, about you know about my own existence and also my own art and and i actually grew up with theater that was what i did when i was a kid you know oh okay and and also hosted radio shows i was actually a radio guy you know and and then i turned into this character hang from helvet and and i just realized when i had my kid that i just want to have have tried out all these uh things that have been in me all the time and see if it sticks you know and okay. i was asked to play jesus in a musical you know jesus christ superstar yeah, okay and at the same time i was asked to do like the the cast in and and a biographic movie about this huge johnny cash like scandinavian folk singer uh cornelius cornelius okay yeah. yeah uh it's on it's actually on netflix now so you you can actually oh is it really yeah yeah oh cornelius. shit okay so everybody can see it sweet and and, um, and uh, that was that was actually weird because i had you know like i was i was playing the main cast you know mm -hmm. for a movie and a scene production that was my my debut into acting okay. yeah well that kind of was well, that escalated quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You're like, well, shit. Where do I go from here? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, and and after that, I've been doing uh, other musicals. The last thing I did was actually, uh, I, I I I was singing an opera. <laughs> oh no, shit! Wow. Yeah, last winter I played the Mozart, the Magic Flute. <laughs> okay. All uh, right. I, I played the Wizard, Serastro. You know, like. And and it was a full hardcore production, you know, at, at, at a huge theater in Sweden. So, so uh, they asked me, "Have you done opera before?" And I said, "Nope." Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. do, do you do you know how to sing opera? And I said, "No fucking way," uh, <laughs> because it's not four by four, is it? Nope. Uh, and so you never did opera before? Nope. All right, let's test try to sing this you know lo, 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 lo. and then i was like well that sucked i thought <laughs> they said well uh you're an opera singer too did you know that and i said nope you want a gig and i said yep if you're crazy enough to ask me i'm crazy enough to say yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> right right and it, it went it went over well oh yeah yeah it was really great but I, I I had to fucking rules. Uh, I spent like ten weeks just studying the music and and trying to get you know that blues American uh, you know uh, uh, chorus verse shit you know out of my oh, head okay. you know? right. And, right and think like Mozart because he never Mozart was never in the bio to be honest you know oh, okay <laughs> Mozart <laughs> wasn't a Baptist. 
Yeah. <laughs> right. Did did you have anything, you know, as far as like being in a band and performing in front of huge crowds, did any of that help, you know, or assist as far as working in film or working in theater? Well, in film, in film, you're kind of okay because if it doesn't work, you do it one more time. But if you're oh, on stage, right. you, you you have actually one more challenge when it's a theater because if you're if you're on a rock show, you have like this crazy crowd and they're always give you feedback in in the way of, in in the form of cheering and and yeah and girls flashing their tits and, and you know. <laughs> Uh, but when you do like a classic opera Mozart in front of like 700 people sitting there totally quiet and when you're done with the song they don't even applaud and no one are showing their tits which is <laughs> kind of cool because the average age is like 62 years old on the women so I'm kind of glad for it but you never get any feedback whether it was good or not okay the theater because I, the way i'm used to I'm, I'm used to like shaking ass and then i get these <laughs> cheers but i can do like the best performance ever did you know and nobody reacts to it or responds to it but a couple of days later uh the 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 boss of the theater is coming like well i have to tell you you have performed better than ever and walks yeah. and i was like what yeah thanks That's, yeah i thought i was fired <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> ow that hurt <laughs> you know <Really? laughs> so you actually have you actually just have to trust your own gut feeling more than okay yeah but which is good for me because i uh, i uh, i i need to kind of uh uh be a little uh, I needed to be more humble also because uh, cheering and applauding don't become addicted to it because that does not describe how people actually feel because in the rock and roll, yeah, people are a lot of fake. Uh, uh, so they can stand there and cheering and shout while they're thinking, oh, he's such a fucking asshole, you know? Yeah, you know, while other sorts of audience are sitting like, Roger, you know, you only idiots and imbeciles smile without a reason. And they write there in their columns that it's the best they've ever seen. So don't trust human reaction uh, and emotion right there and then because that can just be fake or so it true. can be very toned down, but very true heartfelt, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's a lesson learned, life lessons learned. You know? Why do you think that is? Why do you think, you know, as far as just fans in general or even film fans, like where do you think that culture came from to just show one thing and then two days later read a thing and say, boy, Hank did the, the, the best thing ever and you flipped me off at the show, you know? I wonder where that comes from. Well, it, it, it actually comes from pr trying to show protocol, good, good manners and not, and not kind of... Uh, uh, and not kind of like make it all about what you think, you know, like give room and let let things evolve. And then you kind of, of tell it narratively how it went by. Oh, okay. Yeah. Initial but, reaction. Yeah. Just have like a be calm, cool and collected while it happens, because then you get, then you haven't made a mark on yourself involving you in the events. So you can say that I observed it. And uh, having thought about it for two days, I'm fucking totally enthusiastic about it, you know. Uh, right. And this is my way of showing enthusiasm is to say, I like it very much. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. If, a, if a movie came up that, you know, whether it was a remake or a sequel to a, a, a series or a movie that you absolutely love and, you know, a role came up for you to star in it. What what one movie would you want to be in? You know, may it be just a sequel to a movie that you loved or a remake of some sort? Oh, I would love to do, you know, uh, Cool Bodies, you know, uh, that long film about the Emperor Nero. Okay. Uh, played by, oh, what what's his name? You know, that, that uh, huge, that huge uh, English um, actor. What was his name? 
Uh, cool bodies. What? Um, let's see here. You said it was cool bodies. Cool bodies with with Emperor Nero was played by Sir. Ah. Uh, uh, mm. I'm drawing a blank on that one. Ah, uh, me too, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll I'll edit in after after the fact. And, uh, Sir I'll... Richard, so he was like a really good actor. But I would love to play the Emperor Nero, and okay. also okay. actually play like uh, a a version that is actually historical correct because he was not that total weird uh, Christian burning burned down the Rome thing crazy Caligula kind of guy. That okay. is actually a construction in history from from uh, uh, from the Renaissance, you know. So there is actually, if you do your fucking homework and really straighten out the Roman history, uh, the Emperor Nero had uh, had some reasons for acting out when he acted out, and he was not that pervert, imbecile, crazy guy that he's being portrayed as right now. So. I would love to do like the Emperor Nero based on historical facts more than uh, uh, Vatican, uh, uh, Vatican uh, accusations, you know? Okay. Wow. Yeah. I mean, and, and look at, you know, in the history of what's been written and in history books and what's taught in school. I mean, there's so many things that it's difficult to even touch on, you know, what's actually fact and what's not. I don't, I, I don't want to go there, man. <laughs> because, <laughs> right. right. Because... We won't. We won't. If if people ask me about what I think, uh, they can be tempted into thinking the same. <laughs> and I <would laughs> hear a person having my beliefs, at, like at, I hope that I'm the only one in the world having my beliefs. <laughs> Oh my lord! Well, look, this is this is going to be wrapping here. I do have one finale question. If you want to let everybody know, you know, just kind of what you have going on, maybe some some, you know, what what you're doing in all of this pandemic here. Uh, this is your opportunity, Hank. Well, what I have done because me, like everybody else, lost our gigs, you know, and uh, I I know a lot of people who have been struggling with depressions, addiction, everything. And I just realized that we are in a very dark period in history of the world. So I decided to take one of the songs that Johnny Cash uh, made in the Americana trilogy, made by uh, Bonnie Prince Billy, uh, I See a Darkness, uh, that song, and Johnny Cash yeah. I did a cover of it. And I'm going to release it now. And I'm making oh, now a shit. hashtag awareness campaign called Out of Darkness. And on the winter solar eclipse, the 21st first of December, I will host a, a global streaming uh, where I am uh, playing acoustic Hank songs and I'm also talking a little bit between uh, uh, the songs about what we are all struggling with and just telling the world that we are all in a dark place right now, but the only way to survive this is that we start to show some brotherly and sisterly love and friendship and hold hands as we are crossing from 2020 to 2021. And uh, it's going to be streamed all over the world. I have a great friend of mine in, in India is a student. He was just like isolated, sitting with his computer. And he said, can I please translate this into Hindi? Because a lot of us are, are, are a lot of our fathers and mothers are killing themselves, you know, and in, in, in the States, there are 22 soldier suicides each fucking day, you know, and, and, wow. and the youth, the kids, you know, they, they, they see no future. They feel, you know, and, and we are all sitting in our own, there are riots and there are uh, discussions about whose lives matter, you know, because, uh, no, it's not true uh, 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 that there is a static situation where all lives matter. No, we need to lift up the ones who need to be lifted up to your life fucking matters too, you know, and our lives matter and and we are now so isolated and alone and depressed that 
uh, I decided to, to put like an, an aw global awareness hashtag called Out of Darkness. And, wow. and uh, the single will be out shortly. I'll make a video. I would love uh, if a lot of people, you just make like hand signs, do the hashtag Out of Darkness, show your beautiful faces, and show the world that we are not alone. We are not uh, uh, we are not crushed by this. We are not stuck in darkness because uh, there is a way out. And if you ask me I, uh, for directions, I even know the way out. And that is holding hands together, you know. So wow. whether you're black, blue, whether you're uh, a, a boy who's a girl or a girl who's a boy, whether you're a shark trapped in a man, whatever, uh, whether you're rich or poor, whatever, uh, these days are dark days and we have a choice. We can join uh, and, uh, and hold hands. The ones who see the lights lead the blind one and, and we move away from here. I don't know where we're going, but we can't stay here. That's it. And wow. uh, there is a way out of darkness. So I hope for a lot of support. I don't have any apparatus about it. I'm just doing it on my own. I had Damn. nothing to do. So I'm dependent upon people doing it. And if it doesn't uh, happen, you know, if it, if, you know, if it doesn't turn into something big, I don't care because that was what I could do. I couldn't do anything else right. because I don't do person very well. But this I can do. Man, that is absolutely awesome. That is huge, <laughs> huge. I, I, that you have a, a tremendous army behind you, sir. That's definitely <laughs> going to be backing you on that. So that's fucking I, so, so I cool and, and huge. I hope so. But everybody, especially you guys in, in America, you know that uh, we, uh, we haven't been flying back and forth as much as we used to. But don't think for a second that we don't love you all. And don't think for a second that we don't share your tears. And we know that you share ours. And together, we'll, we'll, we'll go out. And we'll go out with bang and not a whimper, you know. Man. Up. Huge. Monumental, out, sir. <laughs> out of darkness. Out of darkness. Out of darkness. Awesome. Awesome. That is absolutely amazing. All right. So we, we have that huge news from you. Uh, I, I cannot wait to see that start rolling out here. Of course, you know, I'll share it and tons of other in the army uh, will, will be doing the same as well. So I have one finale question for you, Hank. Uh, and, and I've titled this, uh, this finale question. It's called the top five masturbation albums. All right. So in, in an interview uh, before you had mentioned Egomania, your first solo album being uh, uh, what you called a masturbation album. And I wanted to ask, along with Dead and Egomania, what other three albums would make the five masturbation albums of all time? Oh, uh, you have Raw Power. Oof. Uh, Absolutely. You have, uh, you, uh, I, would, I would be very close to say, like, uh, uh, the Rise and Fall Sea Stardust. But no, uh, I would Ooh. say Heroes. Okay, Heroes. Bowie album, you know? Yeah. And uh, in honor of uh, Philly the Kid, you know, uh, uh, it'll have to, he, he's going to get his own Guns N' Roses album, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah. You want, well, appetite. Appetite. Appetite for destruction. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Man. And all the other albums I would mention now are just intercourse albums. So, <laughs> <laughs> man. All right. Hank, look, man, thank you so, so much. This has been a huge moment uh, for, for me in this show. Uh, and, and just in general, you've been so humble and so great. I really appreciate your time, man. It, it means a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you, bro. Thank you. And God bless you all. Take care. Stay safe, <laughs> my man. Lo-fi horror guy, Hank Van Hell. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. All right. How the fuck? He's a lo-fi horror guy. Yeah, he's kind of a guy, but he is so lo-fi, lo-fi horror guy. Yeah.